Empire. We're going to check in on Kyler Murray and see how the number one pick in the league is improving and learning as he goes. And then we'll take our regularly scheduled look around the league, the week eight previews and predictions. This is the Football Jones Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Mike Jones. Thanks for coming back for another episode. You can read me at usatoday.com. Follow me on Twitter at ByMikeJones and on Instagram at ByMikeJones. As I said, we're going to focus on Kyler Murray today. I am going to be happy to be joined by Greg Moore of the Arizona Republic. Covers that team and has the up-close look of Kyler Murray. And they're coming off of three straight wins now. They are 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. We're seeing improvement out of the first overall pick as he's learning his way, kind of learning as he goes here in the NFL. And so that's what I want to get with Greg. And so here we are. Let's catch up with Greg of the Arizona Republic and learn how Kyler Murray is doing. All right, so I'm really happy to be joined here by Greg Moore of the Arizona Republic and USA Today Sports Network. Greg, how you doing? Yo, Mike, I'm doing great, man. How about you? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. You know, I wanted to have you on because, you know, I think Kyler Murray is an intriguing story, and it's interesting to see how his progression has been. And I haven't been able to see him live yet this year, um, but I know you've got that up-close perspective there. So I wanted to know what you've seen, what you've observed as he's feeling his way along so far. Kick and play, right? So yeah. I, I go back and forth, man. Um, either Kyler Murray is a baseball player or he's a Texan. And I can't figure out which it is, and I'm just going to assume that it's both because he is both. So when you watch baseball and when you go in the clubhouse and when you talk to guys who play that sport, they'll tell you about moving on from a bad play. They just put it behind them. It's almost like it didn't even happen. And that's essential in that sport because even Hall of Famers fail three out of every ten times. We know that to be true. Right. This is something that Kyler has grown up with. It's something that he's seen, he's learned, he's processed. So he doesn't take any one play, good or bad, further into the game. You can look at the Detroit game as kind of evidence of that. He played like crap the first three quarters, and then boom, he leads the team to a uh, fourth quarter comeback. They tie the score up. They end up escaping week one with a tie, whereas that could very easily have been a loss. Right. Now I keep thinking about the guy as a Texan because, yo, that's what he is. He doesn't say anything more than he has to say in a post-game news conference. Uh-huh. He doesn't give you any unnecessary emotion. And when he's out there on the field, he's just slinging that bad boy around. We've seen him hit Larry Fitzgerald deep. We've seen him hit Trent Sherfield deep. We've seen him take shot after shot down the field, even when it seems like the offense is going to be spreading things out. It was almost to the point that it looked like he was pressing or forcing the issue in the middle of the season there. Uh, we're only seven weeks in, but I'm going to go with, say, like weeks two through five. Right. Uh, there were some losses in there uh, to the – let me think about this – to uh, the Panthers. There was a loss in there to the Ravens. And it looked like Larry Fitzgerald was kind of getting forgotten about. Kyler wasn't checking down to tight ends. He wasn't throwing the ball out of bounds. And it looks like all of that's out of his system now too. And I think Kyler's growth and emergence is the key to the three-game win streak. Okay. Okay. So what changed? Because I agree with you. It did seem like he was pressing. Um, I thought the first game, it looked like he was overwhelmed until the fourth quarter and they started going with the quick hitters. Um, then it looked like the next couple of games, like you said, Baltimore, Carolina, Seattle, those losses there um, seemed like he was pressing a little bit, but then what clicked that has made, I know it's Cincinnati, Atlanta, and the Giants, three teams that are not at all world beaters, but it does look like he's playing better. I think really, man, it's just an issue of confidence. It's an issue of confidence and meshing with uh, the play caller, head coach Cliff Kingsbury. It's one of those things to me where it's sort of like you finally step into your moment. Uh, think about the dog that finally catches the car and just doesn't know what to do with it. You're like, holy snap. I never thought that I was trying to climb this mountain. I've been climbing this mountain my whole life. And now I'm standing up here looking around at the summit. 
And I kind of didn't think about what was going to happen when I got here. Okay. Now he's comfortable. Now Cliff Kingsbury doesn't think he knows what will work in the NFL. He knows he knows what will work in the NFL. Kyler Murray doesn't think he knows what kind of speed NFL defensive linemen and linebackers have. He knows he knows. And it's just an issue of gaining confidence and gaining comfort and just relaxing and trusting in his ability. Has he, when you, when you have talks with him, um, does he sound or what has he said or to kind of reflect it to let you know that where that confidence came from and was there a particular point where all of a sudden he felt more comfortable? You know, I get the sense that he just kind of just lives like this, right? I get the sense that the dude has kind of just been the dude his whole life. And you'll hear people around him say stuff like that. You'll hear his teammates say stuff like that. Kyler, he doesn't do a whole lot of bragging on himself. That's just not his speed. Uh, I've talked to him in news conferences. I've been around him quite a bit. He doesn't say a whole lot. But if you ask him a direct question, he gives you a direct answer. And there's an assuredness there that it's sort of like, even when it was going bad, it wasn't like, I don't know if I can do this. I wonder if I can do this. It was more like, oh, no, this thing's going to turn. You just give me a minute to figure this out. And when it goes, you'll know it. And again, it just seems like something that's really uh, natural to him. And if you just sort of look back at his history, the success he had in high school, state championships uh, in, in Texas, we all know what Texas high school football means. We all know what type of success he had. We saw what he did at Oklahoma, you know, top 10 uh, Major League Baseball draft pick. It's just one of those things where the guy has put the work in mm -hmm. and everything he touched has worked because he's put that work in. And I think the confidence just comes from there. Gotcha. Now, he did not have a great passing day um, on Sunday against the Giants. Um, how did he respond to that? Was he frustrated? I know they got the win, so that's all that matters. But what did he have to say to that? Because, I mean, you know, he had had, you know, a couple 300-yard games. And then this one here, it was just a little over 100. Yeah, so I didn't travel with the team uh, to New York, so I wasn't able to see it or be there personally. Mm -hmm. But really, that was just a function of the weather, right? It was right. raining. And Cliff Kingsbury said it himself. He's like, look, we do an accurate precision-based pass game. And I knew that wasn't going to work. That was out the window. So that was just a function of Kyler operating within the system that his coaches set up for him, which to me is indicative of growth, too. He right. didn't try to force anything. He didn't seem pouty or mopey or angry. He said, yo, coach called a run play. I'm going to hand this bad boy to Chase Edmonds, and that's going to be the end of it. Yeah, you know, that's the, another thing that's been a little bit surprising to me is that um, the role there, because, you know, for a little while I was like, okay, well, what's going on with David Johnson, you know? Um, and then now Edmonds is emerging. And Kingsbury is committed to the run a little bit more than I thought he was going to. Uh, is that another reflection of him trying to, you know, basically kind of figuring out how to, how to be better as a play caller as well? I think so. I mean, because I'm, I'm in the same boat with you, right? I figured they would throw the ball, you know, nine out of every 10 plays. I mean, I, I, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. Right. But early on, uh, Cliff was saying stuff like, hey, listen, I'm asking people who've been in the NFL what they think will work. I'm asking people around me for advice, and I'm incorporating what I get from them into what I'm trying to do here. Now, I haven't done like this super deep dive into what he did at Texas, uh, Texas Tech, because it could be, you know, that we have this idea in our minds that they threw the ball a lot more than they did. I think they threw it a lot, but it could be that when we stop and take a look at it, like really look hard at it, maybe the ratio was closer to 50-50 than any of us would have really realized. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think this is just Cliff sort of looking around and saying, okay, guys who've been in the NFL tell me that a run game is essential. Right. Also, I know that my offensive line – have to be able to pop somebody in the mouth in order to gain a little confidence. You've been around the game, Mike. You know it's easier to run block than it is to pass block. When you pass block, you get back and you absorb a beating. When you run block, you are able to give a beating. And when you are able to give a beating, sometimes that creates confidence and puts you in a better position to absorb it on the pass blocking side of things. So I think it's just an acknowledgment that the NFL is a different game from college. I think it's an acknowledgement that sometimes psychological confidence is a big deal, and if you can run the ball on third and short when you know you got to get a yard, that creates confidence among your linemen, among your skill players, along the guys on the bench, and it puts doubt into the mind of an opponent. And if you look back at it, the Cardinals have actually been pretty good running the ball on third and short for most of this season. So I think you're dead on there 
when you're saying it looks like Cliff Kingsbury is making some concessions to the NFL game and doing what he needs to do to maximize his talent, which to me is just, it's just smart football, right? It's not even smart football. This is yeah. like smart life. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, I mean, you look at it. The first game, 54 pass attempts. Second game, 40 pass attempts. Third game, 43 pass attempts. And then – when they played Seattle, it scaled back to 32. So, you know, then on this winning streak, 32, 37, 21, it definitely looks more balanced. And I guess, you know, that's because I was like, man, this kid's going to drop back 50 times a game. But now I, this is kind of the medium that we're seeing here. But at the same time, Kyler never looked overwhelmed. It just looked like the defense was able to just tee off on him every single time because they knew that the pass was coming. And now that's not the case. Yeah, I think you've got to mix it up on these NFL defenses, right? I mean, these guys are big, they're strong, they're fast, they're smart, they've seen everything. So you've got to be able to mix up, you know, uh, innovation, like surprises, like the jet sweeps, like the, you know, we're all going to look right and then throw left. Mm -hmm. And Cliff said it himself. I think it was after week one. He said, look, man, or maybe it was week two. I got a little too cute out there. I was trying to do a little too much. And I'm going to sort of return back to the basic elements of football. And again, it's football. Sometimes you got to hit somebody. And I think sometimes that means the run game. Now, if you look at it too, Kyler is dropping back quite a bit, but he's also more comfortable scrambling because he yeah. knows when to get down, when to get out of bounds. Okay. And actually I've seen him on a couple of plays, know that the defenders kind of off balance and then put his shoulder down a little bit too. So it, it, it's, it's a mix, right? Defenses right. don't know what's coming both from a play calling standpoint and from a Kyler Murray being comfortable and willing to improvise standpoint. It's, it's fun to watch the evolution. It's like you said earlier, though, man, these three wins are not against world beaters, but they're three more wins than the Cardinals had. Like they had what three wins all of last season right. and they haven't had a three game winning streak since 2015. If you can't take that for what it is and just say, Hey, yo, we belong in the NFL. We're doing what we're supposed to do. This feels good. We can build confidence off of that. If you're too cynical to acknowledge the positives out of a three-game win streak, I, don't, I just don't know where we can have a conversation. Right. No, no, I, I totally feel you on that. And with Murray, I was going to ask you because, okay, the last three games, 10 rushing attempts, 11 rushing attempts, 10 rushing attempts. I was wondering if that was a, a result of called plays or him just calling his number when he drops back and seeing somebody in man coverage and taking an opening there. It's absolutely a mix. I've heard Larry Fitzgerald say – that Kyler has a real knack for knowing when to scramble to buy time, scramble to extend a play, scramble to throw, and when to scramble to get upfield for yardage. We've seen him on key drives, scramble, get up the field, get a key first down. I think it's, it's really, it's a mix. Uh, we're seeing the run pass options more often. We're seeing, again, just a quarterback get comfortable being the guy he's always been, just doing it in a, in a new place. Good deal. Good deal. So what do you think, okay, the next um, three, four games look like for him as far as growth? What do they want him to focus on? Obviously, they want to keep winning. But, but where's those areas that he really needs to address so that way he can continue to elevate this team and, and do well when he's playing a, you know, a tougher opponent? We've got the Saints on the 27th. Then they've got the 49ers. Then they've got the Bucks. Then they've got the 49ers again. Right. And so the 49ers undefeated, of course. Of course, they've got the young edge rusher out there. Uh, then, of course, New Orleans at New Orleans. That's always going to be tough. And then the Bucks. I mean, that's like the Super Bowl for these guys, right? They're going up against Bruce Arians. They're yeah. going up against their old coach. They're going up against their old defensive coordinator, uh, their old quarterback coach. Like, this is – that's a real showdown. But you're talking about Kyler's growth, right? Yeah. If you just go back – two weeks ago I think it was the Atlanta game uh week six he was off he was like the NFC's offensive uh player of the week right his quarterback rating was 128 mm -hmm. he threw for like 340 yards three touchdowns no picks if you're looking for growth beyond that I, I don't know what you want right that's not a rookie that's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL and I don't know that it's even reasonable to ask a rookie to be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL week in, week out, just like that. But I'm here to tell you, man, if you get anything close to that performance, right, we're talking a 70, uh, a, a, a north of 70% completion percentage. We're talking north of 300 yards. We're talking 
the three to zero touchdown to interception ratio. And of course we know that he can get things done with his legs. I think he ended up, I don't know, something like 30 yards that game. Look, if he just does that, that's plenty. Um, and again, sticking within the game plan, knowing when to check down, knowing when to find a safety valve. Hey, you know, the deep shot's not there. Let's find Larry in a one-on-one -on -one kind of route. We've got Larry matched up with a linebacker. We know full well that uh, we can put option routes in. We can trust the quarterback and wide receiver to read the same thing, and that'll make it even trickier for defenses. If he just does what he's doing, I think everybody around here – and around here, I've been both the fan base and people within the organization would be beyond happy with that. Well, Greg, I really appreciate your insight, man. I feel like I've learned some stuff and um, we're going to have to do this again because obviously you're going to continue to monitor Kyler and his progress and see where the, uh, the Cardinals uh, wind up this year. Um, but 100%, but before, Mike. Look forward to it. And thank you for calling me, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, first, real quick before you go, tell everybody where they can find you on social media, online and everything like that so they can check out your work. Oh, yeah. Uh, Greg Moore at Writing Moore, W-R-I-T-I-N-G Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Uh, that's on Instagram. That's on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at azcentral.com. That's the web presence for the Arizona Republic. And yeah, man, I'm out there. I'm everywhere. It's pretty easy to find. So that was Greg Moore on Kyler Murray, and it's going to be interesting to see how he continues to progress, but it really looks like he's starting to get it, and that um, Cliff Kingsbury is starting to get it, as we discussed. So now, we're going to jump into our weekly preview and predictions, starting with the Thursday night game, the Washington Redskins visiting the Minnesota Vikings. A lot of familiarity there. You got Kirk Cousins facing his old team. You got Adrian Peterson and Case Keenum facing their old team. I would love to say that this is going to be a great back and forth game, but I just don't see it. The Vikings are on fire. The Redskins stink. I've got the Vikings winning 35 to 18. A player to watch for that for the Vikings obviously is Kirk Cousins. You know he's gonna gonna want to try to have a great game there. Um, stick it to the Redskins. And then on the other side of the ball, it'll be Adrian Peterson. Yep, I could have said Case Keenum because he's out for some revenge for the team that moved on from him, signing Cousins instead of him. But I think Peterson and his ability to run the football is going to help ease pressure and really have an indication on what kind of a night the Redskins are going to have. If the Vikings defense bottles him up, then it's going to be a bad, bad night. But again, Vikings 35-18. Up next... And have the Seahawks versus the Falcons. I've got the Seahawks winning this one closely um, on the road there, but I've got them winning 27-25. Player to watch for the Seahawks is Chris Carson, their running back. He's going to be going up against a very stingy defensive front. Yes, Russell Wilson is the guy that makes things go there in Seattle, but they really like to run the football, establish the run game, and Carson's gonna have to uh, he's gonna have his work cut out for him. On the Falcon side of the ball, it's Matt Schaub and Matt Ryan. Those are the two guys I'm watching because we don't know yet if Matt Ryan's going to be able to play because of that injury. And Matt Schaub will be the guy. He finished the game last week, and he would start if Matt Ryan uh, can't play. He's been there for a while. He knows the system. So that's good for the Falcons, but they are struggling so much. I don't know if it's really going to matter. But I, I think that playing at home, they'll play the Seahawks close here. But... They'll fall short once again. Got the Eagles on the road versus the Bills. Um, I have the Eagles pulling this one off. 27-24, bouncing back from that loss to the Cowboys. My guy to watch for the Eagles is Carson Wentz. He's struggling um, uh, as of late. Um, he's turned the ball over. He hasn't produced more than 200 yards passing in uh, the last uh, two or three games. They need him to get back to being Carson Wentz. Yes, obviously, he's missing some offensive weapons still, but he's got to be better uh, for them to have a chance to win. And I think he will shake off some of these struggles. My guy to watch for the Bills is Shadavius White. He just earned AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, that defense of the Bills really does not get enough credit for how good they are. They turn the ball over. They're very stingy. Next, we'll go Chargers and the Bears. I have the Bears pulling this one off. 24-21. to Mitchell Trubisky is my player to watch. 
he did not look good in his first game back. It wasn't until late in the game when in garbage time he finally started to put things together. You know, knocking off a little rust maybe. Let's see if he actually um, can play well because people are starting to wonder if they should uh, pull the plug on this thing and go with Chase Daniel. They invested a lot in Trubisky. Um, second, they traded up to get him with the second pick. Um, he's got to play better. Um, we'll see how he does. On the other side of the ball, Austin Eckler is my guy to watch. Uh, crazy. He is tied for third most in the league in receiving yards. A running back. Um, very instrumental. Even though Melvin Gordon is back, he still has a key role. Definitely is a receiver out of the backfield. Wins a lot of matchups there. Um, we will see how he does. Up next, we've got the Giants versus the Lions. I have the Lions winning 27-24. Looking uh, at Matt Stafford, he's coming off of a four-touchdown day. He's probably going to be able to have a big game against this Giants defense that really struggles. Um, and, and so that's why I'm going with the Lions there. And uh, I feel like uh, the player to watch for the Giants will be Matt Barkley. Um, Matt Barkley. Ha, Saquon Barkley. He's going up a defense against a defense uh, that is highly motivated. Um, they, they are tough, but... Although they're aggressive and getting after the quarterback, they're not the greatest against the run. So they're going to try to prove that they're decent against the run, try to accept this challenge. But I think that Barkley's going to have a big day, and that's he's going to help keep his team in this game. But they'll fall short. Up next, the Raiders versus the Texans. The Texans need a big game. They need to bounce back. Disappointing loss last week against the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I've got them winning 28-24. Deshaun Watson's coming off of a two-interception day. So he needs to put that behind him, carry this team to a victory. He's my guy to watch for the Texans. And on the other side of the ball, uh, Derek Carr is my guy to watch. He actually leads the NFL with 74% completion percentage. But they need him to get more aggressive. And so I want to see him go after some of the, this Texans defense, really uh, give his uh, wide receivers a chance to make plays, trust them. Um, not quite be so conservative and uh, see if they can can make them sweat a little bit. Up next, got the Jets and the Jaguars. Got the Jaguars winning this one, 24 to 20. My player to watch for the Jets is Sam Darnold. You know the song, kids see ghosts sometimes. You know, he said he's seeing ghosts. We'll see if he can bounce back. You know that now every struggle, every time he struggles, he's going to hear it. Um, and uh, it's, you know, maybe it's unfortunate. Maybe it's unfair even but he's got a lot of pressure on him he's got to deliver here um but I, I just don't see them getting it together they're going against a really good defense in the jaguars my player to watch for the jaguars is uh leonard Fournette. he's coming off of a big day 131 rushing yards on 29 carries um they would like to continue to pound the ball with him uh ease pressure on gardner Minshew until nick folds gets back and so let's see if Fournette can have another big game up next this one is going to be a stinker, I think. The Bengals versus the Rams. I mean, the Rams defense has got some things they're trying to work out here, so they haven't been quite as dominant, but I still feel like they're going to win this game very easily. I've got the Rams winning 37-20. to 20. My player to watch for the, Bronco, uh, for the Bengals is uh, Andy Dalton. Um, it almost seems like he's living in his last days here with the Bengals. There's talk that if they should bench him um, to see, you know, what else they have for the future. If they need draft quarterback, Ryan Lindley there. Dalton, he's supposed to be the guy for them, and he's just not playing like it. And there's a lot that's that's wrong with this team, but starts there at the quarterback position. Um, he's going against a defense, like I said, hasn't been as dominant, but... They did do better last week against uh, the Falcons. Dante Fowler coming off the day with three sacks in that game. So we'll see. He's my guy to watch. See if he gets after um, Andy Dalton and really disrupts the flow of this Bengals offense. There's a good amount of familiarity here because um, Zach Taylor, the coach of the Bengals, was the assistant under Sean McVay last year. Um, so they know each other well. It could be interesting, but skill-wise, they just don't have enough talent. I'm in Cincinnati to hang. Got the Cardinals at the Saints. Saints winning this one 30 to 24. We talked about Kyler Murray. Um, you know, he's going on the road, really tough place to play. Another chance to prove himself, respond in a high pressure situation. Guy to watch for the Saints is Cam Jordan. 
this defense is going to try to get after Kyler Murray. Uh, he does not have a great offensive line, even though the last three games they've done much better um, protecting him, but they have not gone against a defense like this, and so that's why I'm thinking Cam Jordan has a big day. Next, we've got the Bucks versus the Saints. This should have been the Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston uh, face-off here, the number one and number two picks of 2015, but Mariota has been benched. Ryan Tannehill making his second straight start. Coming off a day where he had 312 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Can he improve? Can he build on that? Can he be their answer at quarterback? We will see. I think that the Titans can pull this thing off. 27-25. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Jameis Winston does. He's coming off of a game where he had six turnovers in that loss in London. Five interceptions. He has got to get this thing figured out. His time is running out for him as well. Up next, got the Panthers and the 49ers. Have the 49ers winning this one 28-18. to um, Nick Bosa coming off. Uh, he's got four sacks now. Had a big game against the Redskins last week. Um, he's going to be going after Kyle Allen. Uh, we'll see how he does, if he can continue this. Impressive start for the rookie. For the uh, Panthers, my guy to watch is Christian McCaffrey. He is the guy that makes that offense go, whether it's out of the backfield as a ball carrier, as a receiver. Defense has to account for him, but he's going against a very tough defense. It's going to be hard for him to be quite as productive, and so that's going to put pressure on Allen. Up next, got the Broncos versus the Colts. Have the Colts winning 28-24. My player to watch for the Colts is Jacoby Brissett coming off of a, his career day. Um, 300 something yards four touchdowns no interceptions he has been building towards this thing and i think that he is definitely um has arrived he is a legit franchise quarterback i believe he is doing a much better job of avoiding sacks making plays for his team um uh, and because of that the colts are in first place in their division my guy to watch for the broncos is a quarterback who's trending the opposite direction joe flacco his time is running out in this league. It looks like, you know, the, the Ravens were done with him. The Broncos thought he could be uh, the guy for them. He is not playing well, and he does not look like he's having a lot of fun. His body language is awful. His production is terrible. Um, and we'll see, you know, how he does against this Colts defense. Up next, this is the game I will be at. This is the Browns at the Patriots. I think the Patriots win this thing 33-13. This was once expected to be a pretty exciting game, um, but the Browns, as we now see, have more growing pains to deal with than anticipated. Still will be interesting. Baker Mayfield's going to have a lot of pressure on him. This is where, uh, Patriots defense is epically good, and it's going to be hard for Baker Mayfield and his guys to get anything going, but we will see. My player that I would like to watch for the uh, Patriots is Mohamed Sanu. Just traded over from the Atlanta Falcons. Fills a void. They need another playmaker at wide receiver opposite Julian Edelman. Josh Gordon going on injured reserve. We'll see what kind of an, a debut Sanu can have there with the Patriots. Sunday night game, Packers at the Chiefs. Unfortunate, this was supposed to be Aaron Rodgers versus Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes is rehabbing from the knee dislocation so matt moore is the guy for them we'll see if he can handle the these duties and all the pressure because it's going to be coming at him my guys to watch for the uh, packers are preston smith and zadarius smith preston smith with seven sacks Z zadarius smith with six they are going to be pinning back their ears and coming after matt moore that's why i think that the packers win this one 32 24 then to wrap it off a game that i really wish we could just skip altogether the Dolphins versus the Steelers on Monday Night Football not I don't expect this one to be close Steelers I have them winning 27-18 player to watch for Pittsburgh is Mason Rudolph coming back from that concussion all indications are he looks good feels good um, he had you know some solid games here and he's going against a defense where he should be able to have quite a bit of production and my player to watch for the Dolphins is Ryan Fitzpatrick making his second straight start after reclaiming that job. He does make this team more exciting. They still are not very good, but he makes them a little bit more entertaining to watch. And we'll see what he can do. 
But I don't think that uh, this defense against the Steelers, I think, is going to give them quite a bit of trouble. Anyway, that's our picks for the week. Hope you guys have a great week. Enjoy your football Sunday. If you have any questions, email me at mjones at usatoday.com. Hit me up on Twitter at ByMikeJones. And again, keep on listening to the podcast. Tell your friends about it. Give me your ratings. Email me your opinions. And I will talk to you guys on Monday morning. Thanks.